We love all of you. We're so grateful for the opportunity again uh, to be with you guys and to, to, uh, for the invitation to come. We are so, so grateful. Crossway. Amen. It's the Amen. way of the cross. Amen. It's crossway. Hallelujah. Because there's really no other way. Amen. No other way to get in. No other way to stay in. Oh, thank the Lord. That takes all the pressure off, ladies and gentlemen. All the pressure's off of you and I. Because Jesus did it all at Calvary 2,000 years ago. And our simple childlike faith in who he is and what he did keeps us in. Keeps us in. Again, the enemy may have been fighting you all week long. But he can fight all he wants to. Because he won't succeed. Jesus has already got you. Jesus has already got you. Hallelujah. You're in the palm of his hands tonight. And he's got really big hands. And he ain't going to let you go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thankful again to uh, Pastor and, and, and our sister. Uh, so grateful for you guys letting us come. Uh, <clears throat> Pastor said he was going to swap out and tag team. And I love that because that's what Bob and I do. Uh, we tag team and uh, we're grateful for that. And uh, Not that anybody's here in the house tonight. But uh, if, you, if you don't believe in women preachers. <laughs> yeah. God's prepared a mansion just for you, and it's right beside mine. <laughs> so yeah, you need to start loving me on this side of glory before we get over there. Uh, and again, I, I know there's nobody in the house like that, and uh, so thankful for you all coming out tonight. And again, it's Saturday night, and no better place to be. No better place to be than in the presence of God. With like-minded believers lifting up Jesus Christ. Man, better than the best hospital in town. Amen. <laughs> and better than the best club. Better than the best bar. Hallelujah. Better than the best place where they're offering a little of this. Because this you're going to need again and again and again. But one touch from Jesus and we're changed for time and eternity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you'll turn with me tonight to the, the book of Luke, the great book of Luke, and we'll start here in chapter 10, verse 38. Chapter 10, verse 38. And as, as Pastor mentioned a moment ago, uh, my husband will be ministering in the morning. So if you're, if you're here locally or if you travel just a little bit, you can be back with us again in the morning. I know uh, the Lord will bless you tonight and again tomorrow. Amen. So if you can come on back, and I understand folk have to work, so we, we, we don't. Um, you're excused if you have to go. We understand. And tomorrow morning as well. But if you can be here at all, we'd love for you to come on back. But uh, Luke 10 and 38, if you're there, give me a good Saturday night. Amen. 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 And now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha. You are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. Wow. Martha, Martha. I love you, Martha. But you're troubled and distracted and worried about all these other things. But Mary has chosen that one thing that is needful. There's one thing that is needful. And there's one thing that's needful. And it won't be taken away from her. It won't be taken away from her. Just come and sit at my feet. Just come and sit at my feet. And if I had a title tonight, it would be, Just come and sit at my feet. And a subtitle, 
Just give me Jesus. Just give me Jesus. Just give me Jesus. Just give me Jesus. Hallelujah. You can have everything that this world holds. Just give me Jesus. Hallelujah. Just give me Jesus. Just give me Jesus. I don't care about all the things that sparkle. I don't care about all the things that shine. I don't care about my name, my name being in light somewhere. Just give me Jesus. Hallelujah. Just give me Jesus. That's all I want tonight. I know that's all you want tonight. That was Mary's heartbeat. Amen. That was Mary's heart. Amen. Was Lord, I just want to sit at your feet. Lord, let us just sit at your feet. And I know we've prayed, but let's just pray again. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for the sweet opportunity to come and be in your presence, Lord, to break the bread of life tonight. Lord, let it be nourishment to our spirit. Lord, let it be nourishment, Father, to our spirit, man. Lord, that we would be edified that you would, you would be glorified tonight, Jesus. You might be lifted up. And Lord, that we would give you all the glory, Lord, all the honor. Father, that you would touch each and every one of us, Lord, in the capacity that only you know we need to be touched. Lord, minister to us. And Lord, I thank you that we'll just come and sit at your feet, Lord, as you open your word to, uh, tonight. Lord, give us revelation Give us understanding, Lord, that we might walk with it, that we might run with your word. In the name of Jesus, and everybody said amen. amen. And amen. It says here that Jesus entered a certain village, and he entered into a house whose name was Martha. Martha and Mary were sisters, as we know, and I know this may be a, a common narrative for many people, but... It's good to hear it again. And sometimes when the enemy has been bombarding your mind, we need just the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We don't need anything fancy. We don't need anything added or subtracted from. We just need Jesus. We just need Jesus. We just need Jesus. Need Jesus. And we see here that, that Mary and Martha uh, were, were throwing a party. They were having some people over. And I know we're in South Louisiana, and you all like to cook. Yeah. <laughs> amen. And even the men folks said amen. 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 All right. <laughs> but it's nothing wrong, let me say that, let me preface it, nothing wrong with cooking and having things and getting things ready for when you've got people coming over. Understand that tonight. It was, a, it was needful for those things to take place. What Martha was doing was not wrong. Amen. What Martha was doing was right. She was getting things ready for people. She was seeing to it that everything was in place and that everything was in order so that people could eat. I like to eat. <laughs> That's not a hint. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe it is. But we like to eat. Uh, we like to eat. And so she was getting everything ready and getting everything prepared. And again, those things were not wrong. But she was distracted. She was worried and she was troubled. She was divided in her mind because she knew that those things had to be taken care of. Even as much as I believe she maybe have wanted to go and sit at Jesus' feet. Maybe, she, I believe, in at least in part, she had a heart for Christ. Well, not just in part, she had a heart for Christ. She wanted to be like Mary. I'm sure there was something in her saying, Man, I just want to come and sit at Jesus' feet. I just want to take some time away from all the busyness, from all the noise, from all the distractions, and just come and sit at his feet. And, you know, uh, as I said, this is not wrong. It wasn't wrong for her to be distracted. There's a whole lot of things in this world today, in 2018, that we can become distracted by. Yes, amen. There's a whole lot of things that are actually quite awful that we can become distracted by. And I don't want to start naming things or labeling things, because if I don't name the thing that you may be struggling with, then you're going to go, she didn't call me out. <laughs> 
But the Lord knows, and that's ultimately between you and Him. Yeah, yeah. It ain't none of my business, or pastor's business, or my husband's business. In fact, it's between you and Him. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. And He's good at convicting. <laughs> Hallelujah. Much better. Much better than any of us could ever be. And thank the Lord that's between you and Him, and between Him and I. But she was distracted. Mary was distracted. And while that was a good thing, there's many things that we can become distracted with today in 2018 that are not good for us. That don't edify us. That don't build us up and don't strengthen us. There's all kinds of stuff. All we got to do is flick on the iPhone. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> oh, boy. Can somebody send her home? <laughs> we got our we got our iPhones, we've got our iPads, we've got our iPods, I, 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 when really the real problem is I, I, I. <laughs> and I know I sound like I'm against technology. I'm not against technology. I've got an iPhone right over there in my purse. Thank the Lord, I hope it's off. <laughs> So I'm not, I'm not against technology, I'm not against the iPad and the iPod and the iPhone, but there's so many things that we can become distracted by just by turning it on. Mm -hmm. yes, things that don't edify us, things that don't build us up, yes. that are not good for us. Right. Well, and I said I wasn't going to meddle, but maybe I might. <laughs> Those sites that nobody else knows that you're going to. Come on, come on. Those things that our eyes and our ears are entertaining that we think really won't affect us and really won't hurt us. And we think they're just a, a little kitten. When in reality, it's a jaguar. Yes, yes. That'll destroy you. Hallelujah. That'll kill you. That will hurt you, not just hurt you, but wreak havoc in your own heart and life. Forget about everybody else beside you and in your family, in you, yes, yes. in your own heart and in your own mind. And I understand this tonight. Jesus doesn't have one word of condemnation for you tonight. Not one word of condemnation. Thank the good Lord. Thank the Lord. He doesn't come to condemn us. He didn't come to beat you up. He came to save us. He came to deliver us. Yes, yes. He came to set us free. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He Hallelujah. came to deliver you. Hallelujah. He came to set you free. And again, I know I'm, I may be focusing on that one thing, but that's something that we, we don't want anybody else to know about. And there's going to be a whole lot of people and a whole lot of churches coming in and sitting in on, on a pew tomorrow morning. And these are believers I'm talking about. And they're coming in in chains. Yes. They're coming in in bondage. And they're leaving out the same way that they came in. Because they're not hearing that the blood that saved them is the same blood that will deliver them. The same blood that brought them in is the same blood that can set them completely free. Hallelujah. The same blood. It's trusting in that same blood of Jesus Christ. And they need to know. They need to know, they need to hear that they can be delivered so that they're walking in in shackles, but they're walking out set free Amen. through the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And again, I don't say that with any condemnation whatsoever. And it may not be a, a, a website that you're looking to. And it doesn't really matter what it is. It can be end for unforgiveness in our hearts. It can be anger. Boy, that's where... This is the real deal. This is the real deal. Well, why doesn't she name something that's not my issue? <laughs> I know so many times we talk about the, the top five. We talk about the... The things that we can see, the, the smoking and the drinking and the drugs, alcohol, gambling, infidelity, all those things that we can see on the outside. But Jesus is just as concerned about the things yes, on the inside yes. that nobody else can see and that nobody else may know about. 
that unforgiveness that he wants you to release. Oh, that anger that we may hold against somebody else that Jesus says, I want that. And whatever else it may be, and I'm, I know I'm honing in on a few things here tonight, but whatever it is in your heart, Jesus will touch that thing, will point to that thing and say, I want that. I want that. Give me that. Not to beat you up, but to give you life. Yes. To give you life. And when he takes it, you'll be thinking, Lord, why did I wait so long to give it to you? <laughs> Lord, have it all. Here I am, Lord. I surrender all. Hallelujah. Here I am. Take it all. Take it all, Lord. And those are some of the things that we can become distracted with in 2018. But she was distracted with things, again, that were not wrong, but they weren't the best. And we can begin distracted with even good things. At the cost of risking having the best. Yes, amen. I want to just sit at your feet. Jesus, I want to just come and sit at your feet. I know all these other things are good things. They're not wrong things, but I want the best. And Jesus, you're the best. Jesus, you're the best. So Lord, give me a heart that's after you even more than it already is. Lord, let me not become distracted with even the good things that are drawing and vying for my attention. Lord, I know it's right to do this and to do that. And I, I got to do this and I got to do that. But Lord, just let me sit at your feet. Lord, just let me sit at your feet. And the reality is, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we've got to sit at his feet. In order to do those things that he's asking us to do, whether you're called to five-fold ministry or not, you've got to be sitting at his feet. You've got to take some time and just sit at his feet. You've got to just come apart and rest a while. Yes, yes, hallelujah. Jesus told his disciples, come apart and rest a while. Come on. Come with me. Just you and me. Just you and I. One on one. And it's been said if we don't come apart and rest a while, we'll just come apart. He doesn't want us to come apart. So he woos us. And he woos us. And he woos us. Again and again and again. Come away, my beloved. Come away, my fair one. Come away. Come away with just me. With just me. And I'm all about corporate prayer meetings, and we ought to gather together in corporate prayer meetings. But Jesus wants you just yes, for yes, himself. Yes, he wants you just for himself. He's jealous for you. Yes. He is jealous for you. Man. And that's not a crazy nightmare jealousy. That's a good jealousy. <laughs> that's the good jealousy. He knows that he, who he is and what he's done is best for you. So he's jealous for you to come and get away and just be with him. Just be with me. I'm more than enough for you. I am more than enough for you. I am more than enough for you. Jesus is more than enough for you. He is more than enough for me tonight. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter what you have need of. Doesn't matter what need in your body. Doesn't matter what need in your bank account. Doesn't matter what need in your emotions. Doesn't matter what need in your mind. Doesn't matter what need in your spirit. Jesus is enough. Jesus all by himself is all that you need. He is more than enough. He is more than enough. He didn't even have to woo Mary. She was already there. <laughs> she was already there. And I know I'm talking to the choir tonight. You're in church on Saturday night. You're already there. We're already sitting at his feet. We're already sitting at his feet. 
and, and you know, uh, we were talking about prayer for just a moment here and, and corporate prayer and how that's needful and it really does strengthen the brethren. It strengthens us to gather together and to, to hear and to see other people of like mind and like heart. Real people. Oh, aren't you grateful for real people? Yes. Thank the Lord. Real believers. Where we don't have to come to church and wear a mask and pretend everything's all right. That's right. And go home and everything ain't all right. Yes. He wants everything to be all right at home. So when you come to church, everything is all right. Yes. And we get a little more of all right. Hallelujah. We get a little bit more of all right. But, so corporate prayer meeting is, is important. But one-on-one -on -one prayer is vital as a believer. And I say that, understand this tonight. If you're pray, praying and your prayer life is based on out of duty, is based on duty and not out of delight, yes. then we need to get back to an old-fashioned altar yes. and just come and sit at His feet. And say, Lord, you know what? I've allowed it to become duty. I've allowed my prayer life to become a duty instead of my delight. And Lord, I want to delight in being with you again. I want to delight in just coming and sitting at your feet. You know, uh, Bob and I are, are married. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woohoo! Uh, thank the Lord we're married. And... Uh, we actually just celebrated June 27th. We celebrated 20 years of wedded bliss. Hallelujah. So thankful for that. He's put up with me, as I said, for 20 years. And we're grateful for that. And you know, 20 years again, we were married in Baton Rouge. We were married at Family Worship Center. Had a, a beautiful ceremony. Had a pastor to marry us. Our family and our friends came in. Uh, and we're grateful for that. We have a beautiful certificate at home in a pretty frame on the wall. And the certificate shows that we're legal, uh, for which, again, I'm grateful. <laughs> and I say that tongue-in-cheek. <laughs> but we've been married 20 years. We're in covenant relationship. We're legally yes. married. Yes. We're in covenant relationship. Amen. And thank the Lord for that. But if I didn't talk to him, at least every once in a while. <laughs> and if he didn't talk to me, again, at least every once in a while, we wouldn't have much of a relationship. We wouldn't have much of a relationship. We'd be married, we'd be legal, we'd be in covenant together, but we wouldn't have much of a relationship. And I said all that to say this, that's in an, our natural relationship. How much more does the Father delight in seeing you come? How much more does the Father delight in hearing what you have to say, even if it's absolutely nothing and you just want to be in His presence? Yes. 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 When you love somebody, man, when you love somebody, you can't wait to talk to them. When you love somebody, you can't wait to listen to what they have to say. And sometimes when you when you're in love with somebody, you just you just want to be in their presence. Yes, yes. You don't have to say anything at all. I, I just like being with him. Amen. Amen. And I'm not bragging on our relationship, but thank the Lord we're happily married. Amen. And if you're here tonight and you're not happily married, let Jesus make you happy. That's it. Let Jesus make you happy. Yes, sir. <laughs> Don't even look at your spouse, and I'm not looking anywhere. <laughs> Don't look at your spouse to make you happy. God never, God never intended for your spouse. Don't put that responsibility on them. They can't make you happy. Only Jesus can. Only Jesus can. And when you know that you are complete in Him, Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and that other one is complete in him. Yes. Hallelujah. That makes for a great marriage. Yes. That makes for a great marriage. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. And I know I'm looking at some young people tonight. And thank the Lord. <laughs> I'm young. <Yeah. laughs> well, used to be. But if you're not there yet, let the Lord work all that out. <laughs> Let him work all that out. He's got the perfect spouse just for you. Got the perfect spouse just for you. And again, looking up, if you're not happy, look to him. 
you need to be looking up. Yeah. We all need to be looking up. And he will give you a heart that is for your spouse through him. Boy, that's all just for free. Amen. Marriage Counseling 101. Amen. Right there. <laughs> as long as everybody's dead, we're good. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and you'll get that about 3 o'clock this morning. <laughs> Yeah, that's all you need. Don't come to me for marriage counseling. Uh, I'm kidding. You can if you need to, but no. <laughs> Both of y'all need to die. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. That's, right. that's real. In order to live. Thank the Lord. Okay. Going back to Mary and Martha. <laughs> We're there. She was distracted with much serving. And we can become, again, distracted with much serving, even in the good things. The good things can have us distracted. And I know sometimes I, I feel like, uh, you know, I homeschool both of our children, and uh, it's a wonder that we all made it. Um, but thank the Lord we did, because we'd be studying at the kitchen table, and a squirrel would run by in our backyard, and I'd squirrel, uh, <laughs> tell them all about the squirrel, and we'd be distracted for several minutes by that, and then we'd get back to our studies. But it's easy to become distracted. Right. It's easy to become distracted. Even sitting in the church house on Saturday night, our minds have a tendency to wander. Our minds have a tendency to go somewhere we weren't intending for them to go. When's she going to be done? What am I going to eat? <laughs> What's on Netflix? <laughs> oh my. Yes, and again, no no condemnation tonight. Maybe a little conviction. Yes, come on. And we need a little conviction. Yes. As we're so busy and being busy and doing and doing and doing and we're on the treadmill of legalism, doing and doing and doing, and Jesus wants to just come along and push the stop button. Yes. And say, come and sit at my feet. I'm jealous for you. I want you to come. As if you're the only one in the room tonight. I want you to come and sit at my feet. I want you to be acquainted with me. Like when I first saved you. And you couldn't get enough of me. That's it. Come away. The honeymoon doesn't ever have to end. That's, right. That's a lie. The honeymoon is eternal. Yes, yes. We're married to him. Amen. He's married to us. And he delights in being with you. Just you and him, one on one. Just me and you, one on one. Nothing else. No one else, just you and I in the secret place of the Most High, in the secret place. And know this tonight, he, he knows, he, he knows, he knows it's 2018, he knows it's August 25th, 2018. He understands all the distractions and all the things vying for your attention. All those things that want to pull you in every direction, even just in our minds. He knows that. He understands. And I believe that's why he just brought us by to remind us he wants to spend a little time with you. He wants to spend a little time with me. Just him and I. And again, he understands that we have to work. He understands that we have children and grandchildren. And he understands that all those things require time. And they take time and they take effort. He understands all that. And he doesn't expect us to, to sit in our prayer closet 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Distractions. <laughs> It's actually perfect. I didn't pay her to do that, by the way. <laughs> and I love her. Sorry, I don't want to embarrass her. But we've all had it happen. It's easy. 
It's easy. Before the ring, we may have been distracted. <laughs> and he knows. And again, we have to, we, we, it's needful to work. You don't work, you don't eat. Yeah. It's needful. It's, our grandbabies want to sit on our lap. They need us. And he knows that. So he doesn't expect us again to sit in our prayer closet 24-7, but his presence goes with us. Yes. <sighs> That's good news. Thank you. <sighs> he gets up and goes with me when I'm at my job. He gets up and he's with me at school. He gets up and comes with me when I'm in the restaurant. He gets up and comes with me when I'm playing with the grandbabies and the children. He gets up and goes with me as I'm studying. He gets up and goes with me. And you get the idea, he's with you. He's going with you, his presence goes before you. He's our rear guard and he's actually surrounding us. 24-7, 365, 366 in a leap year. He's with us at all times. And it's his delight to be with us. But Mary had chosen the one thing that was needful. While Martha was distracted and busy, and again, not wrong things, but Jesus would say, Martha, Martha. And as loving as Jesus is, he wasn't fussing at her, he wasn't yelling at her, but he had to call her name twice. Yeah. Martha, Martha. You're worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. One thing. One thing is needful. Just one. One thing is needful. Just give me Jesus. Just give me Jesus. That one thing, and from that one thing, comes every other thing. That's right. Yes. From this one thing comes all things. Amen. This one relationship, this one relationship with Jesus, everything else flows from this one thing. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. This one thing, this relationship's right, all these relationships are going to be right. Amen. Hallelujah. That's good news. This one thing, out of here comes everything else. Everything else is going to be all right when you've got this thing right. And I say this thing, it's that one thing that's needful, our relationship with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So grateful for that. So grateful for that. Just a, a few weeks ago, maybe a few weeks ago, uh, at IYC, the International Youth Conference, at Family Worship Center, I did a little workshop for the leaders there on Saturday afternoon. And the Lord had laid upon my heart to minister to those youth leaders and, and, and pastors and some lay people that were there. But on this same, not out of this passage, but out of this, this same um, theme, this same heartbeat, which is Jesus' heartbeat, which is one thing that's needful. One thing that's needful. And the reality is, if, if you're called into the fivefold ministry, or even if you're not, it's out of the abundance of this relationship that ministry comes. Yes, yes. It's out of the abundance of this relationship right here that ministry comes. And if it's any other thing, if ministry has become any other thing, as I shared with them, if ministry has become any other thing, if it's become about the, the paycheck, or if it's become about the popularity, or if it's become about the prestige, then we need to get back yeah. to sitting at Jesus' feet. Amen. Because it needs to be overflow. Yeah. Oh, yes. Amen. It's the overflow. <laughs> It's out of the overflow, hallelujah. We minister out of the overflow of our relationship with Christ. We minister out of overflow. You, we live, and not just minister, I gotta, we live 
out of the overflow. I can't wake up in the morning without the overflow. I can't wake up in the morning. I don't want to get my size eights out of the bed without the overflow of relationship with Jesus Christ. I got to have him. I got to have him, not just when I'm standing behind the pulpit, but I need him when I'm at my house. We can't have revival in the church house until we've had revival at our house. We got to have revival at our house. Hallelujah. We got to have revival at our house. And revival comes by simply sitting at his feet. Yes, yes, hallelujah. Let him set your heart ablaze one more time. Hallelujah. Let him set your heart ablaze like he did when you first fell in love with him. Like he did when you first fell in love with him. When you first knew how much Jesus loves me. Hallelujah. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Hallelujah. Little ones to him belong. We are weak, but he is strong. Oh, yes. Jesus loves me. Hallelujah. If we ever get beyond that, we need to come on back. Yes, yes. <laughs> Because there's nothing better than Sunday school theology. Jesus loves me. This I know. For my Bible tells me so. Do you know that he loves you tonight? Do you know that he loves you? And understand this tonight. I know that, uh, well, when we, when we first fall in love and when we think it's love, we're all giddy. <clears throat> and we think it's all about the emotion. But love's not all about emotion. Real love doesn't always feel good. Real love remains when the feelings have long gone. Real love was nailed to a tree 2,000 years ago at Calvary. That was real love. It's not rainbow flags and unicorns. It's nails that pierced his hands and pierced his feet. And he did it for you. He did it because your name is written in the palm of his hands tonight. And again, just forget about everybody else in the room. He would do it just for you. If you were the only one to say yes to him. Think about that for just a moment. I know we hear it and sometimes it goes in one ear and out the other. But if your, your Savior, our Heavenly Father, loves us that much that He would send His only begotten Son to die for you. To die for you. To take your place because it should have been us on that cross. It should have been us taking that crown of thorns upon our head. But he did it in our stead. He took our place. He took your place. Because he loves us. And he loves you with an everlasting love. Try as we might to run away from it. He's going to love you and run you down. Amen. He loves you that much. He loves us. Mary chose the one thing that was needful. And this, of course, was before Jesus was crucified, buried, and resurrected. Before he ascended, he was still here on the earth. But he promised us that he would give us another comforter. He would send another just like him to come alongside and to help us. And I'm grateful tonight the presence of God is here. The Spirit of God has been here from beginning to end. And the good news is He came with you and He's going home with you. <laughs> so we're going to spend a little time with Him here, but you're going to spend a little time with Him there. And again, as I said a moment ago, we can't have revival in the church house till we've had revival at our house. But let him go ahead and set your heart ablaze. Let him set your heart on fire so you can feel some of the emotions yes, again. Yes, amen. I'm grateful again. We don't live by how we feel. We live by faith in the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. 
But I'm grateful that he lets us sense his presence. That he lets us feel him. That he lets us feel him. That he lets us feel his presence. And assures us that he's with us. He promised he would never leave us and never forsake us. No matter which way you look at it, he's never going to leave us, never going to forsake us, never going to forsake us, never going to leave us. He's, you're not alone tonight. The devil may have lied to you all week long and said, you're, where, where is he? But he's a liar. <laughs> he's a liar. Jesus has been with you all the time. And again, he just brought us along to remind you he's with you. And he loves you with an everlasting love. And the reality is he's just wooing you to himself. To come and to keep on coming. To come with the one thing that's needful. And just sit at his feet. Come and sit at his feet. You don't have to come with multiple words. You don't have to be eloquent in your speech. He's just looking for your heart. And sometimes we don't have the words to say. And we just got to groan in our spirit. Sometimes we can be so heavy and so burdened, we can't even get to an altar. And we got to say, Jesus, I don't even know where I am, but come yes. meet me where I am. Yes, yes. Come meet me where I am. Yes, that's right. Come find me where you find me. But don't leave me there. Amen. Yeah. Or don't leave me where you find me. <laughs> but he knows exactly where you are. He knows exactly who you are. He knows what you had for breakfast or what you didn't have for breakfast. And I say that to say he's intimately acquainted with you. He knows the rascal that you are or the halo that you've been shining up thinking it's of some kind of value, which it's really not. <laughs> and he loves you. Boy, he loves you. He loves us tonight. If you'll stand to your feet. I can get singers and musicians to come on back. We can become worried and distracted. And again, not all those distractions are wrong. Our mind going in a million different places, all at once it feels like. But Jesus knows every thought. He knows every thought before you think it. He knows every anxiety before you knew it. He knows every anxious thought before it came, comes to your mind. He knows every word on your tongue. Psalm 91 would tell us he knows our rising up and our sitting down. He knows our going out and our coming in. He knows if we make our bed in hell, he's there. If I take the wings of the morning and go to the uttermost parts of the sea, even there, his presence is with me. He's with us. He's with you tonight. He loves us with an everlasting love.